Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Social Marketing Academy. I am so glad that you were back. We have such an awesome show. My buddy Judy is on tonight. Um, Judy, Judy, Judy. Um, Judy Lynn, um, who is going to talk about some of the pressing digital marketing questions that you have posed to her via online. Um, we're going to be talking about SEO. We're going to be talking about PPC. Some really interesting things that um, hopefully we can give you some insights that you can start using these tools and tips right after the show. What the hell? Get moving. Um, but I'm going to introduce Judy in just a minute. Um, if you are new to our show, welcome. Uh, we, we stream and go live once per week, every Thursday. Uh, and we have tons and tons of shows. We've been around for quite a few years. So if you're looking to learn more about digital marketing or maybe even offline marketing, uh, we have the show for you. The Social Marketing Academy is all about trying to share information and insights from experts that will help you build your business in new and exciting ways. So if you like no-nonsense advice and you don't mind laughing once in a while, then you'll like the show. Uh, if you want to learn more about the show or how you can engage, oh, that's the, I have to, I almost forgot. We want to hear from you. We are basically all of the shows that we have um, coming up, um, even today's show, the questions are all generated by our, our viewership and our listeners, as well as um, our friends. So anybody that wants to weigh in and has a question about digital marketing, we can definitely find a topic to cover that in a future show. Also, I want to bring my network of experts. I'm connected with so many brilliant people because how does one offer full marketing services when you don't offer them all, right? Everyone has their specialty area. So I am going, I always pull my resources to create the best campaigns I can for my clients. And I want you to have that same sort of access. So what topic would you like me to cover next? We've covered PR, affiliate marketing. We've done social media marketing. We've done advertising. We're going to be doing SEO and PPC today. What topic is next for you? So please let me know. Go to my website for my digital marketing agency, the Go Agency. It's gosalesandmarketing.com. Again, that's gosalesandmarketing.com. Hey, and while you're there, there's a free e-course that we're offering. It'll pop right up when you go there, as well as our blog. Our blog, we update very regularly. And all the topics that we cover there are going to be ones that will help you kind of dive deeper into your digital marketing understanding and offer better solutions to your own internal campaigns. So please do check it out. There's no secrets here at the Social Marketing Academy. I want to be able to help as many of you out there really harness the power of digital marketing in a way that you can be in control. So that's kind of our goal. So please do check us out, subscribe, follow YouTube, Apple Podcasts, wherever. All the links will be in the description of this show, as are the links to our guest, Judy. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about Judy Lynn. Um, Judy Lynn has over 20 years of corporate and digital marketing experience, and she's the founder and CEO of Digital Marketing Doctor Agency. It's a boutique digital marketing agency based in Carlsbad, California, and it's designed to help clients generate leads, website traffic, and to promote their branding and specialized product offerings. Digital Marketing Doctors Academy, or DMD, offers an array of marketing services such as SEO, PPC, web design, graphic design, video, podcasting, content marketing, basically everything that you can possibly think of in and in between for established corporate accounts, startups, private medical practices, everything and everything. Judy covers it all. Her team is phenomenal and growing because she is in such demand. So she is definitely one you're going to be interested to meet in just a minute. Um, Judy graduated with a bachelor's degree in English with a written emphasis um, from University of San Francisco. She also attended USF on a collegiate tennis scholarship uh, for ha -ha, playing Division I. In her early 20s, she taught tennis at several tennis clubs and um, then began starting her marketing career. And on her free time, because I always ask everybody, what do you do in your free time? Uh, she's an artist in all mediums and is now a sculptor. Obviously, she does tennis, and she loves surfing, yoga, hiking, and meditation, uh, all of the things that I would like to do at some point. Uh, I wish I had time to do things. Uh, but Judy is very fantastic, as you can imagine, and I'm going to bring her in right now and um, welcome her to the Social Marketing Academy. Hey, Judy, welcome. Yes. Good <laughs> I, it's good to see you. How have you been? 
I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, I'm alive. I'm alive. Yeah. I'm well, I'm, I'm caffeinated, which is always you look a win. very cozy. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> uh, we were just a just a kind of like a, a insider trade secret. I was telling Judy that we're getting cold weather in Florida, so I it's like it's as soon as it goes beneath like seventy degrees in Florida, <laughs> it's like oh, oh my winter clothes I never get to wear. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull them out at once. That's right. <laughs> Oh, but Judy, just so everyone can kind of um, kind of know about your specialty area, can you just can you speak to that point just to kind of introduce yourself in terms of your expertise that we're going to be kind of talking through today? Sure. So I come from corporate marketing and digital marketing, and I've been doing this kind of work for about 20 years. And my specialty is in search engine optimization, branding. We do paid media. We do well partly email and um, social media marketing, content marketing, video podcasting, pretty much the whole gamut of digital yeah. marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Judy's got you covered. I guess I told you guys already. <laughs> um, and and it's, Oh, I forgot web design, Chris. Oh my God. No, can't forget website design because exactly. WordPress. I hate that. So whenever someone says, Hey, I need a website. I said, not me. You need to talk right. to Judy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Been there, done that. No, thank you. Um, uh, so we got lots of questions from the audience. I wanted to kind of just go through some of the ones that came up kind of more often, um, about sure. the subject matter, Judy, I want to go through the first one. Sure. This, oh my God, let's start with the one that everyone, everyone asks. Okay. I immediately smile and laugh because I, it's every time I get this, it's like you expect this question before it's even, it's even uttered right. by your prospect when you're kind of going through that discovery phase of the right. client. So Judy, um, how long is it going to take for me to see the results of this SEO campaign? Huh? <laughs> how long is it going to I take? I know. I think that's just like a guaranteed question, right? Totally, right? So yes, um, everyone does ask me that. That's very correct. So yeah. they hope that it's going to show up in a couple of weeks, right? Mm -hmm. But realistically, it's a long-term investment. SEO is not something that's a quick fix. And I, I tell most of my clients six months. Mm -hmm. you're, if you see something crawling and indexing within three months, you're very fortunate. And that's probably because the team is doing aggressive work and building out SEO campaigns, content marketing, building out, you know, social media syndications, videos, podcasts, everything on page and off page SEO. There's enormous amount of work that needs to be done in order to just to be seen on Google search. So you're just kind of like turning on a house right right? Before it can be sold. So you're, you're turning on, like, I call it more like the electricity or the gas of a house. So we're doing that for your website on, on page and off page for us. Mm -hmm. That's why it takes six months. Yeah. You know what? I also liken it to almost like feng shui, like it's mm -hmm. kind of, you know, it's getting the house and it already has everything in it and it's kind of right. replacing it so that you're going to get the best energy. I know I sound like I'm going to go out and hug a tree after I say this, but like, it's, it's kind of like you, you have to do a lot of rearranging. There's a lot of things that you yes. have to, to work on. And, and I think mm -hmm. one of the biggest misconceptions that a lot of people have, and it's the same thing that I get, I've mentioned it before when we were talking about, we were talking about on another episode, uh, Facebook advertising and right. um, how a client will, a prospective client will come to me and say, um, so your Facebook advertising, you just boost things, right? So when I, I could do that, I could, I just put, I push the boost button all the time. It's like, oh yeah. Uh, let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> There's a lot more to it. And I think when you're entering into the concept of SEO, right. understanding what Judy was saying, like, you know, uh, the time frame on that six months is it, it's an investment, uh, mm -hmm. uh, an investment. And I, and also I think one of the things too is I'm sure you agree with me. You have to really vibe with the client because right. they have to ride with you for that period. And right. it, you, you, you need them to stay on board because it's not instant. So how right. do you, is there any, anything that you do to help manage your client's expectations along the road or keep well, them in yeah, line? So, yes. So um, there's also a, con a contingency based on what you're getting from the client. Right. Yeah. So, you know, they might think, oh, well, you know, if we get it, if we get some indexing within three months, you're very fortunate. But six months yeah. is, is the real target. 
Well, there's some clients that you are working with and you go into their site and the site's not even really ready to be seen or to be optimized. So then you're preparing, just redesigning the facelift of the website. Right. And then you want to do social media and they say, I have no graphics at all. So, <laughs> okay. So you have no graphics, you have no photos, you don't have any client testimonials. So now we're starting from the basic 101 level yes. where we're just trying to gather all the data and the collateral. So the foundation of whatever the client has, if they don't have it. We have to build that first before doing SEO. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's, I liken it very closely to when a client will come to us and um, a prospective client, always a prospective client um, mm -hmm. who we've never engaged with before. And um, they will say, hey, you know, we really want to execute a social media campaign. We see the value. We'd love to do it. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, what's your goal? You know, what are you, what are you looking to really affect change? What's your results look like? Right. And they will say, well, we're looking for sales and conversions on our website. And I'm like, okay, wonderful. What's the website? And then I take a look at it and I'm just like, whoa, uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, let's talk about your website first. Right. <laughs> Judy, I need your help. Right. <laughs> it's like, exactly. yeah, because if, if we, and this is exactly how I think mm -hmm. it's unethical to take their money for social until they have a converting website. Um, right. If they're looking to get conversions and their website's not conversion ready, we can't mm -hmm. do these other pieces. So it's the same thing that you're saying, you know, exactly. when you have to go in there, it's not like lickety split, everything's ready to go. Exactly. I mean, I think there's an assessment process to see if they are even equipped yet, you know, like exactly what you're saying. Yeah. They don't have the basic foundation built with, you know, graphics and web design and branding and tagline and content it's you're you're just busy trying to get the basic level first for them yeah you know and that's that's what has happened in the past mm -hmm. and then the ones that are a little more advanced and more elevated then you can really start going in and turning on the engine for seo and doing seo campaigns for them yeah uh it's it's i think it's always important to like to what we were both saying if you're listening mm -hmm. to this or watching it's it's really important for you to understand that Marketing is a process. It's not something that you right. push a button and everyone, if I said, well, if someone would come to me and say, well, why is this person getting a thousand um, engagements on one post? Right. There's a, there's, there could be like five or six at a minimum inputs that mm -hmm. are going to get those results. It's not mm -hmm. just copy this mm -hmm. and you'll get this. Um, right. There's a lot more sleuthing that we have to do um, using our expertise. We know where to look, so right. that makes things easier. But still, it, it can be muddy waters that we have to wade through to kind of figure out what data is the most mm -hmm. um, pertinent, I guess. I mean, I'm doing this right now with a client that we're onboarding. I, I'm going through Shopify, Google Analytics, mm -hmm. Facebook advertising, Google advertising, and I'm trying to see where the connectivities are and where the synopses are, are blasting and how right. it works um, because the client doesn't, because exactly. the client had four different people working on it previously. And mm -hmm. you can tell, I mean, you've been in that too. When you go yeah. to yes. someone's, uh, you can see different people were doing different things and they, well, none of them were talking. Not been done. That's the other thing is what has not been done <laughs> at all. So, um, yeah. but well, interesting. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Judy, sorry. Oh, no, you're good. Um, you know, I wanna just chime in on that part is it's also how established the client is and the company. Yeah. You know, if they're a startup company and they just, you know, recently started up a, a, web, a website design within three months, I mean, come on, three months, really? I mean, you, you know, it takes more time to just build that out as a startup right. versus a company that's been around for 50 years or 20 years or 10 years. Right. So I think the establishment of the client is going to help determine how quickly you move as well. That's one. Two is the aggressiveness. So depending on your budget, you know, if it's a couple thousand a month versus 20 grand a month, well, that's a whole bandwidth of, of arsenal that you can work with for the marketing budget right no you know but sometimes you know yeah. 
clients that don't have big budgets, they expect the expectations of someone that has 20 grand or more a month. And, you know, it's something to consider for them as well is what are you getting under 2K? It's, it's so true. And it's one of the things that I have a, I have a specific way of um, handling prospects yeah. at that level. And one, what I do is I try to be as harsh as possible during the discovery phase, not right. in a way to push them away, but I right. want them to really understand. Um, mm -hmm. Because for, for example, do you remember like when you're a kid and you got your allowance and it was $10 and you were like, you felt like you're a millionaire. That's <laughs> very similar to, right. you know what I mean? It could be like, they have like $10,000 in investment and they're just like, Oh, right. uh, this right. is a big right. thing. And I'm only going to spend a dollar 50 on social media management right. and, or it's, it, you have to be realistic exactly. as to where you are. I mean, I think, I mean, we can, I mean, we, it, you know, we are very efficient, effective as it is with the money. Mm -hmm. It's not about spending as much money as you, as Absolutely you can, right. it's how you optimize the money. That that's the other thing that I think clients and customers should know about is that it's not like we're requiring this big budget. It's how we're optimizing and using it as the biggest mileage for that campaign, you know? Precisely. And I think that one of, one of the missteps a lot of companies do mm -hmm. is when they're just starting out and they have a product, for example, products are the ones where I've seen the biggest missteps. Um, mm -hmm. They don't have the marketing budget to really successfully gain the visibility that they want, gain the traction that they want and affect right. change. They say, okay, well, hey, I'm just starting out. I only have a couple hundred dollars to spend. It's kind of like, well, you know, why don't you do this yourself for right now? Like, why don't you take that money and save it for right, right now? And then right. once you're able to kind of get things rocking and rolling, right. you can jump in because- I mean, I have the most successful product companies that I've worked with that have started off have like a five to $10,000 budget for uh, uh, like marketing right off the bat. Right. And that's kind of where you need to be. Um, right. Even at the low end, I would say mm -hmm. for some companies, especially if it's a fast moving consumer good, you need to have a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, having something that you're, you're designing yourself and you want to put on social media and you have a hundred dollars to advertise. Yeah. Um, yeah. What can you really expect to get, you know? Yeah. It's tough. I mean, even even with the people, let's say with the startups that have limited budget, you know, they can take as far as they can go. Mm -hmm. But at some point, they're going to need a real professional in marketing and advertising For sure. to help them. So I think it's good that they gauge that discernment at, one, at what point do I go to a real professional? And see, what I usually do is... Um, I will take those clients on for consulting and mm. then I will consult them and show them the way, give them the path, tell them how to best do that. And then right. that way they're just paying for my time. They're not paying for all of the extra pieces and all the advertising. Right. I just share with them what I know and then we'll try to hold them accountable along their journey. And sometimes that tends to be a really great way to get them going and start and understanding and raising the money and getting going. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's kind of just, it's, it's interesting. You know, another thing that kind of springs to my mind is like ROI and results. Like how, what is your, how do you track and per, uh, report performance? Like what is your way of doing it? Right. Anyway. So on, we are more digital marketing oriented than revenue. We do work with a client's um, sales team as well to track the numbers on the revenue. But on the digital side, we track through SEMrush, we use ARAPs, we use multiple other dashboards with partners that we, like another um, backlink um, partner that we work with where they have analytics everywhere on traffic. Also Google Analytics, AdWords, they, there's built-in reporting that we give on a monthly level on mm -hmm. traffic and conversions. And, you know, we have SEO people that are more on the technical side that yeah. can produce goal conversions and tell us how many landing pages of that vertical is, is driving to that page, mm -hmm. whether it's medical or e-commerce. So we can report on the performance of the traffic level. The revenue, then there's a, there's a synchronicity that has a synchronization that needs to happen at that point from the data of what we bring 
with the revenue people or the salespeople. So that's what we sometimes most of the time using a customized Excel report that they do. What, what do you find is the, the metric that clients are most interested in? Um, leads among Lead, conversions. Leads yeah, they want to know how many come in through your website forms, either patient okay. forms as normal website contact forms that come in on a monthly level. They want that. And then the big names, then they'll tell us like which one came in through your Google search. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so they like that, of course. That's why that's why we are all working for them. So, yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So that's the end goal. I mean, that's what SEO and paid search at the end of the day is. I mean, the whole, the whole purpose of digital marketing is to drive campaigns, to get, you know, website visibility and to get conversions. I yeah. mean, that's the end goal. So. Do you feel that PPC and SEO go hand in hand? So PPC is great, I think, for a startup company that's looking to launch very quickly to get some sort of um, SEO and, um, you know, website visibility and to kind of get that juice flowing on the website and to get right. crawled. But paid search can get ridiculously expensive and you can burn through money very quickly. But it's, it's good to use, I think, for a startup in the first, you know, four or five months and then gradually migrate over to SEO. Or right. you could do it simultaneously is start the paid search and then build out your SEO campaigns. And when you're ready, then turn off paid search and just stay with SEO. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, if you have a bigger budget, you're more of a corporate for like a fortune 500 company, then you do both because yeah. you have the money to do both and they do help each other in the keywords. So, you know, Google of course is going to recognize your Google ads and your spend. Right. And as a byproduct, sometimes, you know, your SEO search results just seems to be more sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, because, because the, the end of the day, it's your brand that's being shown and indexed everywhere now. Yeah. And Google's recognizing your brand name now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because uh, one of the biggest things I think a lot of people get scared about with PPC is the sheer yeah. expense of it. it and yes. Mm -hmm. And do you, I mean, is there any sort of starting budget that you would suggest for a company? Um, I mean, a thousand a month is still, is already extremely tight. Agreed. That's very tight to get any real um, traffic and, you know, performance. That's just starting. So say for a thousand dollars, why is the thousand dollars tight? Because, you know, if you're trying to build out multiple campaigns with multiple ad groups, usually the ad groups are signifying your different product offering or signifying mm -hmm. your verticals. I mean, think about how much you can, you can allocate that money if you only had 10 ad groups. I mean, you're already yeah. burning through that quickly. Then you're limited by how many that you can run. I mean, as an example, with one of my clients, I'm not going to say who, but, yeah. you know, I just, I had to turn off, I think, five campaigns because I burned through so much of it, like call only ads. I burned through what my, my teammate and I, I think within less than two weeks, we were burning through because call only ads are a very effective way because you're actually driving people to pick up the phone and call your customers. Yeah, service. they're great. So we get great numbers when I mean, we get like around 300 a month, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's a good number for a small CPC. So if you look at that and that's just one campaign, how am I going to have money for the rest of the six or 10? Yeah. thousand dollars. I mean, the larger companies, they usually are, you know, at least 20,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And it depends on how many you want to build out. So the budget is going to help discern how many you can create and mm -hmm. build out. Otherwise, you're going to have to pause them or, or not build them. Now, for um, it's interesting, too, because I, I, and I, the reason I'm, I'm kind of asking you to go deeper on this is because one of the things I find is the largest pushback that we get as a digital agency is people that want the, the mark, the advertising spend, because right. the advertising spend, it, it, yeah, it's $20,000 a month. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. going directly from the client's pocket to Google's right. pocket. <laughs> we right. are just managing the game. Right. 
And um, I feel that that's a misunderstanding a lot of the times. Um, mm -hmm. It's almost like they're paying it to us when they're not. Right. But also, exactly. it's one of the things like for it, it, Facebook is a good example of this because Facebook is one of the um, has the algorithm that it doesn't care about you at all. So it, right. it's basically you need to have advertising at least for a while until right. you can kind of get things rocking and rolling. Right. And Facebook, and I would say like, if someone comes on with me, mm -hmm. I really don't want to touch a Facebook campaign for under like 750 ad budget. Right. And, right. and for me, the reason I would have it at that is I would want to boost every single one of the posts using that money so that right. the engagement would be there. So it wouldn't even be spent on advertising selling product because say I did that, I would be left with $150 left for an ad. You, you don't even pay, you pay more for that for an ad in the newspaper. I mean. Right, right. <laughs> Actually, an ad in the newspaper is probably more now. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> Print is extremely expensive, so. Yeah, it's extremely um, expensive. It is. Um, so it's interesting you're saying that because, I mean, if I had the choice and the lead way of saying, you know, if a client gave you 20 grand just for the budget money a month, you know, would I allocate it into paid search? I probably would not personally, because the 20 grand, I mean, you could allocate maybe five into paid search or something, but yeah. the good thing about SEO is it is repurposeful. So mm -hmm. once we build out the SEO campaigns, whether it's content marketing, video podcasting, people need to remember that all that, all those search results and those files, they stay on Google until someone takes it off. Right. So the longevity and the mileage of what you're getting and recycling that material, because I could use a podcast for what? PR and what else? Press kit and what else? You know, branding. It's very, very repurposeful. And that's why I like more of the SEO route because there's many things where you take a blog and now you can build out a backlink showcasing that, that feature blog mm -hmm. or you know, there's many ways to go about it where it's recyclable mm -hmm. and paid search. Once you burn that money, it's over. Yep. I mean, it's, it's so true. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that a lot of, a lot of people, what happens is people will get the, um, I'll, I'll talk to prospects or like on, right. on a discovery call, or even if it's just a friend asking for advice, I'll say, well, what is, have you tried any sort of online advertising? And I'm like, yeah, we, we did a few hundred dollars on Google, but it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And, and I said, was it the free $200 that they give you for opening an account? And they said, they always say yes. And mm -hmm. I said, well, that's good that you did that because creating an account is not very easy, which it's not. Right. Um, right. So that they did that was good. I give them kudos for that, but right. you can't, and this is, this is kind of like a blanket statement. Whenever you're doing something and you spend like $200 on a Google ad, that's going to last about, I don't know, five minutes. So uh, it, it, throwing, proving that to be ineffective for just doing it once for two hundred dollars for mm -hmm. five minutes is not how you can gauge the results that you're truly going to get. Right. Right. So there's like when I have, um, for example, someone will come to me and they say that our target audience is, um, I don't know, thirty-five to forty-five female that are interested in lifestyle. Um, mm -hmm. They uh, are active. They are health conscious, they're beauty conscious. Right. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, we should really look into maybe Instagram or um, TikTok. And uh, they will say, oh, no, 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 we did Instagram, it didn't work. Okay, well, what did you do on Instagram? Well, we did it. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> you did it. So um, yeah, they, they tried it for a month and they didn't get any sales. So that was the end of it. Oh, wow. I didn't know that kind of thinking was there. It does. It happens all yeah. the time. And people will write off full sites, full pieces of their marketing due to that. So if you're, for example, if you're using email marketing platform, because I know that you do that a little bit as well. Um, I've had um, clients that I've helped like kind of work through their solutions just to help mm -hmm. them out. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, we're, we're done with email marketing. We're finished with it. It's not giving us anything. And I said, well, can I take mm -hmm. a look just so maybe I can give you some advice? Yeah. And they were packing it with spam worthy content. So yeah. in the deliverability, the open rate was the negative and the, um, the open rate was terrible. Um, right. And they hadn't like, cleaned up their um, unsubscribes. They hadn't gotten like, you know, did normal right. maintenance things. 
Right. And I gave them a couple of different changes. And guess what? They were getting opens. They were getting clicks. People were inquiring. Right. And it's, they were ready to flush that whole thing. And they had, a, they had oh, the best part, they had a database of 6,000 people and they were a smaller company. Mm-hmm. So it was like, that's an impressive number for a company of your size. Like you can't yeah. just throw that away. Let's really look at that. Right. And I think that just writing something off because it didn't work for a short test period right. isn't always the way to go, you know? Right, right, right. No, I understand. I mean, we don't usually do email marketing. It was more of because there was a need through HubSpot at the time. Right, of course. And that's why we helped. That's why we helped out. But that's not really our focus. Ours is mo- mostly SEO and paid search and the other mm-hmm. digital marketing disciplines. So, but uh, hey, I know you don't guys- forget. Though, don't forget that website design. Uh, we're, what, what are we talking oh, yeah. about? All right, so <laughs> the, the the dirty word or the the not the dirty word, I guess it's kind of the, the understood, misunderstood pupil in the room is WordPress. Cause a lot of people right. um, are obviously because they want something new. Um, right. uh, but where is when you're designing a website is WordPress mm-hmm. kind of like the go-to um, like best yes. option? It's, yeah. So I, I call it the preferred platform, meaning okay. that WordPress is a responsive platform where it can show on tablets, mobile, and desktop, obviously, whereas in the, in the traditional website where it was a proprietary design, then they have to build up a mobile version, then they have to build up a desktop version. Right. So it gets complicated, but that was a little, out, that's, it's outdated now, that way of doing it. Mm-hmm. But WordPress is also most SEO friendly because they've got built-in plugins with the Yoast plugins of yeah. SEO in the back. So you can write metadata in order to be recognized by Google search. Um, you know, I, I know people use Wix or they try to use, you know, even Weebly, but it's just not, you know, when you're an established company, you want to look like an established company with, you know, caliber design, caliber everything, you know, plugins, caliber user navigation with your forms, with your writing, your content. So, you know, WordPress has been a very um, popular uh, platform for all of us. And not just that, it's it's self-managed, meaning like you don't always have to call me or my designer or editor just to change one little word. Mm-hmm. You have access to WordPress where I give you logins, you can go and just change a couple words and you don't have to pay us constantly just to edit because you can do that yourself. It's self-managed. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think, you know, other platforms in the past, they force you to go through them. So then you have to pay them continual maintenance to update mm-hmm. maybe two sentences, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's, it's open source. It's our preferred um, platform. I mean, we do have clients that use others, other types, but um, they're eventually going to migrate over to WordPress. Yeah, it's it's interesting that you talk about the Yoast plugin. This is a story I don't think I've told you this before. <laughs> um, years ago, when I was a little a little agency owner, I was a little little guy. Um, like ten years ago, um, I was asked to cover the Fusion Marketing. Okay. It's called the Fusion Marketing event, and it was um, expl- oh, Fusion Fusion Marketing Explosion, I think it was, and anyway, okay. whatever it was. So ten years ago in Belgium, so oh, wow. I went to, I went to Belgium and I basically was covering and did videos and we shared the videos with the organizer. It was it was a lot of fun, and one of the people that I interviewed and then we went out and had some beers and we're just talking about stuff was the guy that created Yoast. Oh, wow. And I interviewed him. I'm sure you can dig up that interview. It's on YouTube somewhere. I have like shoulder length hair. It's, it was like a a whole different, a whole different world (laughs) back then. Um, But it was so funny because every time uh, like uh, we have a client, they're just like, yeah, we love the Yoast plugin. I'm just like, yeah, I met him. I interviewed him back in the day. (laughs) (laughs) To see another side of you. Uh, and but it's really funny though. He was like he was such such a nice guy, and his yeah. really really good tool. Um, mm-hmm. Do you um do you see lots of uh, in in terms of a shopping platform? I think this is something I wanted to talk to you about. Mm-hmm. Is there a is there a preferred platform that you like to um, have uh, clients work on, or you suggest? Yeah, I, we don't do a lot of e-commerce sites. Okay. So mainly ours is just your informational branding sites, but e-commerce okay. 
sites is a little more specialized. So we, we do kind of send them off to someone else. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if WooCommerce was something that you'd worked in, worked with. Um, I know my designers know how to do that and they yeah. have a portfolio of WooCommerce sites, but it's, it's not what I've done for my clients, but me more for, I think they've done that in the past. Yeah. Um, now let's go into, uh, we are talking about paid search. Um, right. Okay. So we've talked about it. We've figured out the minimum budget. We know why we need the minimum budget. Is it necessary? Um, you know, I was mentioning, I think it's a good option if you are a startup company and you're looking to be seen very quickly. So for short term, paid search is great. Um, if you have the budget, then it's a good staple to have in your arsenal for digital. Is it necessary? No. Mm -hmm. Because the reason why I feel that way is because there's so many different options and other campaigns are, are to me have greater value and mileage and longevity in it than paid search paid search mm -hmm. to me is is almost like a print ad it's just you know yeah, it's good for an announcement some sort of you know welcoming a new employee a new product offering and then it fizzles off and then that's it and then yeah, once print, I, I, it's gone, you know, and paid search, mm -hmm. once you turn it off, all your ads are gone. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you. I think it's really nice. I, I like, I always suggest it if we're doing a campaign for maybe awareness. Exactly, brand. We need, yeah. Right. If you want to get like a little bit of a lift, exactly. an extra lift, it's really good. Or if a client is launching a blog, it's really mm -hmm. good. If um, like that type of stuff, you know, because yeah. I, I think for like, for example, if we're looking at maybe like a local personal injury attorney, mm -hmm. um, PPC will be good at getting them to the top. But I almost say that it's very similar. If it was a TV ad, it would probably have the right. same sort of result. It's, it's a visibility. Like a grand opening, right? Of something, of mm -hmm. a restaurant or, or anything. Like it's, you know, it, again, it's, it's all contingent on, I think, what, the client wants as a, as a budget. If they got extra budget and they want to use it as a staple, that's great. But if they're on a limited budget, I would focus more on branding content, video, and yeah. SEO. Yeah. So okay. it's, mm -hmm. all right. How about this? Okay. This is a question that I was I I I was asked not recently, but I've been asked. Sure. And it's um from local businesses. And local business will say, um, well, I hear that SEO is really important, but I don't really care about traffic to my website. How do you counteract that comment? Like, how do you explain I don't the value care about of us? traffic on the website? It's like well, okay, what they like will do saying, is they're usually they're usually places that um that do they're like a boutique or mm -hmm. they're a shop, and they're just like, yeah, I'm just gonna throw up a website, and you know, it's there, and blah. right, but um. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, what say you? In, yeah, yeah, no, totally. Um, I mean, first of all, we live in a digital age. Everyone Googles. Yeah. That is, if you're if you don't know how to Google and you don't you're not being seen online, you're basically invisible, mm -hmm. and you're just relying on local neighbors and word of mouth, which could work, but it's not nearly going to give you the volume of business revenue and leads online. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, no one looks at yellow pages or white pages and like start looking at the businesses. Everyone's Googling, you know. So for a person to say that I don't care about traffic online on website, it's a very naive comment to be saying because mm -hmm. they're not they're not with it at all <laughs> with, with what's going on in our economic um, ways of conducting business today. And Google search is a major part of that. And we live in a digital world where you know, everything is being found first. There are people are looking for you. When, when someone actually goes and Google you, that means they're proactively looking. Yes. You don't have to like, you know, put, you, you're not pulling them in. They're already actively looking in for someone like you, you know, mm -hmm. but if you're not even online with a website where a presence or a profile, you're not even in the game. Mm -hmm. And it's, you're it's basically it's, invisible. Yeah. And that's, and that's something that I always, I always tell people, it's kind of like, there's, 
when you're online, you need to, whether you are a tiny, tiny, itty, itty little business or you're a massive business, you have to claim all of your social media real estate, all of your online right. real estate, right. everything that is available for, for you at your fingertips for free should be fully filled out. Now, right. websites, granted, yes, they are not free. Right. Um, unless you go through one of those cheap platforms that will rake you over the coals at some at some mm-hmm. point, um, which I don't even want to mention them, give them any airplay. But the um, but it's it's interesting. I was telling I was talking through another company that mm-hmm. said that they weren't interested in because I said their website was absolutely appalling, and right. they were trying to um, I don't know if it was a counseling services or it was psychiatric. It was something dealing with mental health. I can't remember what it was. But mm-hmm. um, anyway, their, their website was appalling. And I said, you know, listen, these people are going to be telling your deepest, darkest secrets. And they, they're already adverse to coming to see you. You know what I mean? They're right. already kind of like, oh, I don't know if right. I want to go. Ugh. It's perception. I mean, it's perception. It's and then they go look. perception, right. It, and then they sure. find your website and it's, right. it's like cobbled together like a half played game of Jenga. And right. then uh, they can't find you anywhere else. Right. Think about people, if, if, like I live in Palm Harbor, Florida. So mm-hmm. if people were looking for um, a therapist in Palm Harbor, they would do mm-hmm. therapist Palm mm-hmm. Harbor. Guess mm-hmm. what comes up? Your website, but also all of the social media links that are relevant mm-hmm. to that search. In addition to Google My Business, the Google and My Business. online reputation. We forgot to talk about reviews. Yes, reviews. Okay, so I mean, reviews are huge. Okay, so giving on, you know, adding on to your therapist um, example, I'm Googling your psychiatrist or your doctor, and there's like one stars versus five stars. Oh, yeah. Complaints. I mean, that is a red flag already because people are going to are going to be gun shy coming to you if they feel like, well, there's four patients, five patients that has had a bad experience. You're already, you're already done. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, there's, there are people with jobs that focus just on building cases to refute this for online reputation. I mean, people have jobs just to focus on that. And it's mm-hmm. called online reputation. So, you know, going back to that, you know, that, um comment about you know website does i mean traffic doesn't matter on website really i mean <laughs> you've got citations you've got directories you've got online reviews you've got branding you have a perception all that matters because mm-hmm. it's it's basically a, what did they say it was something like three seconds you go on someone you you go on someone's website in three seconds they should know what you do as a product offering they will know what level you're at based on just looking at your site, if you're outdated, modern, or you're advanced mm-hmm. and your content, you know, I mean, they're going to read your content. So it, it, it's, it's all going to matter because it's your branding and it's your perception and image right. that's on there. But Chris, I do want to say one thing when you were talking about that, it made me think of another thing. Yeah. But- and that is, you know, maybe sometimes people are just a little intimidated about what digital marketing and what we do, you know, because they're not, they're just not aware of what it is. They're not sure how they're spending their money. And I think there's an educational process that needs to happen with them. So it could be that they're intimidated where they just don't know. Um, Because, you know, it's like, you know, just a straight comment of, oh, it doesn't work is a very absent-minded mindset, you know? Yes. So there's got to be other reasons why the person's thinking that, you know what I mean? So I just want to bring that up. I just was just realizing, I mean, even now when, you know, when I speak with clients, I don't expect them to know the lingo of what paid media is Mm -hmm. or, you know, what, you know, social media syndication is, or, you know, I don't expect them to know the lingo, but as long as they understand the concept of what we're doing and what we're delivering at the end of the day to help them in the business, all that matters, mm-hmm. you know? So mm-hmm. there's a translating that's yeah. happening like a, almost like a foreign language. It's, it's so true, Judy. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it's, I find that um, one of the things that is a cornerstone for our onboarding and usually mm-hmm. our first month of service with the client is that we make sure that the client can mirror 
right. what we're looking at in the campaign. So when they're saying right. things and they're talking to us, it's not it's not like we're we're we're, we're like mesmerizing them to think like right. Yeah. Win. It's kind of like we want them to make sure that they understand the concepts that we're presenting to them because right. People come to us because we're experts, not because they're unintelligent. They right. want they want next level help. They could probably exactly. figure this out on their own if they but, if they but really they need to be open to it too. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's the other thing is you know, as long as they're open minded and I mean, they they obviously are if they are contacting us, you know. So within reason, I think that there's there's those instances where um, we're reached out to by a marketing director or a marketing department person who right. was dictated by the boss to oh, find yeah. a social media company. Um, right. And in those cases, it, it never really, we never really end up taking those clients on because right. usually the marketing person is so upset because they were in charge of everything. And I then know, but see, I feel so is, bad sometimes. But there's, okay, it's funny because I've had this happen so many times. It's not that they think you're going to come over and take over. Absolutely. Not, yeah. Yeah, they do. I mean, every person in the marketing team on the client side is concerned about that. But they don't realize we're coming out, we're coming in as an extension of a marketing arm to help you more and to get you mm -hmm. to do things in a smarter, more effective way. So it's like they should be happy we're relieving more work for them, you know, and helping them arrive mm -hmm. at, a, at a smarter solution and doing things. But yeah. yeah, but that's yeah, but it is pretty common thinking that they think you're just gonna come in and take over. Well, what's what I always do is if I if I if they're not too aggressive. Yeah. Sometimes they can be very aggressive and I don't really respond well to that because this mm -hmm. is my agency. I don't, I'm not like pandering to everyone's attitude. Right. So you can right. kind of, that's what's great about, you know, being your own boss, I guess. But right. um, at the same time, I'm very upfront and I tell them the same thing. And I said, listen, what are your marketing goals? Right. Okay, this is what I can help you with. Here's what you're doing. I'm your, I'm your partner in this. Mm -hmm. You take all the credit. This is you direction. Exactly. You're managing this. You right. take the whole full Monty. It's all I mean, about you. Right. And, and it, is it not the truth? It it's, is. And you're making them look good, Chris. Yeah, that's it. And I mean, you're making it, them look superb. And let's just be honest. The goal for me is for us to <laughs> succeed. You know, I want to succeed. Yeah. The client wins. Exactly. I enjoy that, that exactly. level of success for the client. So it's like, no. we're not trying to take things away or get you fired. We're trying it, to make you relevant. Thank you. And, and I think that's such a great thing to emphasize, you know, is, you know, I, because both of us have experienced that already is they need to remember we're on the same team. Same team. Yeah. Hello. We're on the same team. We're making it stronger and bigger so then we can arrive mm -hmm. at our accomplishments, you know? So I think, you know, the mindset there is really important as well. Yeah, I, well, we're, what we're doing right now, obviously uh, we're on a podcast and we're also doing video. So you're the SEO whiz, Jude. So what, why, why do you think it's so popular, this medium? Um, because it's a needed skill set and it's a needed um, tool for businesses to elevate to the next level. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, you know, brick and mortar at some point, you know, back in the days it was fine and they could continue on that trajectory. But now you know, with our condition, you know, as everyone knows, the COVID condition and working remotely. And even if it wasn't working remotely, it's just, it's, it's part of just going with the times of modern digital age now. This is the next level of how we do business online. And digital is a, a tool for us to market ourselves, yeah. to advertise ourselves. It's digital marketing is a digital tool. That's all mm. it is. Yep. And it's going to help in many ways, in many venues to get business seen and to attract new leads, new business and more revenue. If you don't have that component, you're somewhat antiquated and you're somewhat behind. And if you don't jump on the bandwagon, you're going to be further behind. Mm -hmm. And every year it goes by, it's like 10 years and you can't catch up. I completely agree. And something that I was talking about, and I don't know who it was with in one of these past episodes. Um, I mean, everyone that's listening to this, you can check it out in the archives. I'm sure you'll find yeah. it somewhere recently. But um, I believe that this year, which is 2021, right. that 
if you have not tried new things, you really need to be open to it because everybody in the last year in 2020 had all the marketing people had lots of space and time to think about new things and kind of discover new things and explore. I mean, I've talked to more people about services that I, they never have time for. They never have, they don't want to spend any time trying to understand. And now they're kind of really leaning into that. So I think a lot of people are going to be doing lots of different things this year and they're going to be mm-hmm. trying new things. I think mm-hmm. different platforms are going to be becoming more prominent. Other ones that right. we all rely on are going to be less prominent. So if you felt behind before, you're going mm-hmm. to feel even further behind. Exactly. And I always suggest pick something and make a move. Just exactly. one thing, exactly. one thing. And if you can't right. do it with your own bandwidth, you can hire experts to do it. Right. And I think one of the things a lot of people over, they just, they miss is that hiring an agency like yours or mine to do something, you're getting like 10 people working on your account that you are not paying healthcare for, you are not paying taxes for, they have zero overhead and they are going to be better than anybody that you're going to find when you're going through ZipRecruiter for three months trying to find someone for that role. Right, right. Exactly. And, and guess what? There's going to be a contract, so we can't leave. So we're going to be engaged. You know what I mean? It's like, it's right. the perfect scenario. You're committed. Yeah. You're committed to do the work and to mm-hmm. help the client get to where they need to be. And, and here's the other thing, you know, when you're talking about, you know, you have a team of people dedicated to your account is you're gaining an enormous amount of momentum that people don't think about. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're trying to do it by yourself, you know how hard it is to try and do it all by yourself. It's nearly impossible. But when you have more people joining your team, you're gaining traction momentum at a much faster, almost accelerated rate that you could get done in six months. If you did it with just two people, it could take a year or two years. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that in itself of the timeline, I think is also very favorable for the client. And I think also just understanding that it's while we make it look turnkey, it's not, you know what I mean? There's, there's a lot of additional work that goes behind the scenes. It's yes. not, and, and also the editing, the back and the forth, the getting locked out of account and then trying to find the password. There's other things that you're never going to even think about if you're mm-hmm. doing it yourself, that is going to frustrate you to no end, especially if you're not organized. Oh my God, if you're not organized, it's impossible. Well, it's, it, Chris, it's funny because a lot of people don't like what you're saying. They don't know the behind the scenes that go on. They don't know there's a huge production cycle that mm-hmm. goes on. It's not like, oh, we just, you know, put a press release on a wire. No, we have to interview the person. Then we have to write it. Then we have to edit it. And then if we need graphics, we have to produce a graphics. And then now we have to a whole graphics production. So there's a whole production process behind the scenes that a lot of people don't see on the front end. And it's a little, it's very laborious, you know, mm-hmm. but it's, it gets done. And then we deliver that product on a silver platter. Yeah. It's, it's so funny. I was just, <laughs> I was, while you were saying that, I was thinking about like counting. I think from the time that we, cause we work, we work a month ahead on all of our clients, if not right. months ahead, depending right, right, on right. how proactive they are in terms of their own internal schedule. Right. Um, but on average, it's usually, it could be like a month to three months or six and or a quarter or whatever, but uh, we work ahead. So what we, what we do is we go through brainstorming, yes. then we do pitching, and then we right. do planning. And then we do, then we write down the content and we come up with the content. And so I was thinking about it. It's almost like 25 steps before I a know. Post actually gets hit. Exactly. And, and people don't realize that at all. Yeah. They think, and, oh, Oh, well, you had a day to do it all. And you're thinking, <laughs> uh, no, it's more like a week production, you know? Yeah. You think it's really easy. Oh, you just post it. That's it. You post it on social media. No. I There's know. No I, video I was production it. going on, right? Yeah. I told, I told one of my clients, I said, here's the thing. It looks easy to you because we want you to feel like it's easy. So it doesn't stress you out. So it's more <laughs> involved. It really is more involved. I mean, an email edit after we've gone through the approval process and it's like, right. you know what? Why don't we change that header? It's like, okay, talk to the creative director. This is the changes that we need to make. The changes, they find time in their schedule. They make the change to the header. They show me. 
I think it needs tweaked again. It goes back to them. Then it goes back to me. I say, okay. Then we have to arrange a meeting with the client to show them the new. It's it's like. And then and then they want a different email list now. So you gotta put you gotta put together a new email list and a new funnel now. Don't forget that, Chris. Yeah, I can't forget that. Oh, you know what? We love the automation you did. We're launching a new product this evening. Can you do a seven-step email sequence on this funnel, please? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm busy. Busy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Um, it's tons of curveballs. Yeah, tons of curveballs. Uh, well, you know, I think I think overall, one of the things that I think is a good takeaway from the conversation is that you know. SEO and PPC can go hand in hand, but mm -hmm. SEO really does have the staying power that a lot of people, right. and I think a lot of people forget now because I think there's social media has really stole SEO's thunder so much because it's way sexier. It's in the news cycle more. Um, but, you know, for, for me and you, I mean, we all subscribe to numerous newsletters and everything, mm -hmm. nerd letters, I call them, because there's right. some of them are just knowing what to read. Um, and SEO is on every single one of them towards the first quarter, no matter what it is, okay. it's right. always towards the top. And there's, and the best part is, is that if you did an SEO campaign two years ago, you mm -hmm. need to get back in the game again. It's not, mm -hmm. uh, well, even though you did um, invest into your future and you received, you got your credit, mm -hmm. um, things change and Google does change. So mm -hmm. it is good to have somebody that can go in and just do like, kind of like a, an assessment at least. Mm -hmm. An audit, yeah. Yeah, an audit to see how things are right. coming along on your website. And Judy, you do you do those audits, right? Yes, yes, we do. We do. We we start with the website audit and the ranking audits. So that's that's another thing I wanted to kind of um, bring up real quick when yeah, you were talking sure. about that is the staying power of SEO because mm -hmm. it's like a tennis player when you're number one ranked. Well, doesn't mean you're going to stay number one you're going to fall off if you don't keep practicing and keep playing tournaments. And I've seen that a lot with clients where they had no rankings in local search or organic. And let's say they're in the top three, top number one, two, or, you know, even with numerous like search results, they think they're going to stay there forever and they stop doing SEO. And then what happens with, you know, doing nothing for a gap of let's say three, four months, it actually only takes about a month and then things start changing, like the variables start changing. But if you don't do anything consistently every month, your number one or number three ranking will literally drop to like the fourth page. Right. It's that crazy, you know? And yep. it's like, there's a discipline with SEO. It's not just driving it, driving and driving and you stay. No, it's a discipline of every month you produce X amount of blogs and social media and emails and content. It's 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 like working out. If you want to look good and stay healthy, you need to work out every day. <laughs> yep. And and something else too is you have to remember that because I've worked for companies in the past, back in my kind of the worker days. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was the head of marketing in one company, and mm -hmm. my boss would. Um, was just, I didn't understand how his direct competitor was number one on Google. So he found his Google ads and he just kept clicking on them. That's fraud. <laughs> three or four different, oh, he was the worst, but like three or four different websites and um, just kept clicking on them. And then he wasn't getting the joy that he wanted. So he actually hired an SEO company specifically to, to unseat him. And the number oh, one, wow. um, and the number one platform. So all they did was go for the keywords that the other that yeah. the competitor was using. And it gets and really expensive. It gets really expensive. But what happens is when people get into that competitive nature and they have that kind of fire in their belly, mm -hmm. they'll go for it. So that's another reason why to keep yourself current, because if someone starts, to, one of your competitors start gunning for your same words, that's mm -hmm. going to push you down eventually. Yeah. Yeah, and nowadays, because so many things and a lot of these um, digital tools are very transparent. I mean, I it, it takes me five minutes to go into one of my apps and see what my competitors are doing. I yeah. can see everything that they're doing and I can see what keywords are bidding or I can see what they're ranked at. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, it, is, it is very transparent now, you know, mm -hmm. with Google and the digital 
ways of doing things. So that's why, you know, you do need to watch what you do and what you say and how you say it. That's why content marketing and copywriting, you, by the way, hire good writers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like you need, it's like, I only have like superb writers on my team because the writing aspect of marketing and branding is, is very essential and how to persuade mm -hmm. and, and, and persuasive writing. So Mm -hmm. That copywriting is really important. Strategic writing is also important. And all that translates in everything you do in SEO, emails, content, video, all of it. So that helps. Yeah. And I think also one thing to, to, to know going in, if you are writing your own copy for your website, um, when you hire a website company, you don't just send over what you have and say, yeah, this is, this is the rough version. Can you just like bump it up a little bit? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. not our job. Mm -hmm. That's not the job. The job is to build the website with the content that you provide um, mm -hmm. and make it look beautiful, functional and make it built for success. We can make suggestions, but we're not your writers unless you hire us to do that. Right, exactly, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, because we've had, we've had people in the past, um, uh, I've had partners that I've referred business to and they said, hey, um, the client's asking me to just like pick pictures for them to use as stock Im from stock images. Um, what should I pick? And I said, no, get them to do this. Tell them, they need to tell you exactly what they want. This is their business. Right. <laughs> but again, it's people that don't understand that, you know, websites need a little bit of attention from the branding marketing side internally. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, just letting someone else. Decide. Everything. Everything. I mean, your homepage, to be really honest, I mean, your homepage is your, your, your image and your perception immediately. I mean, if you have a bad looking homepage and bad navigation, that's not good. You want it to be as modern and user friendly and, you know, you know, hip and, and the right color scheme to match your logo and your branding. And of course the copywriting has yeah. to be impeccable. Yeah. And, and, and going one step further, this is something that we do with all of our clients as soon as we bring them on. We look mm -hmm. at the um, we look at their website on an iPhone, an Android phone, um, and right. uh, an iPad, a desktop, mm -hmm. and a laptop, and see what yeah. it looks like. And, yeah, perfect. And and that's that's a really great way. Um, usually, and for marketers out there that are listening to this, uh, if you really want to get a new website and your boss is kind of saying, "No, I don't want to do that. We don't need that. I love this site." Pull it up, like I just told, like I just said, and see what it looks like. That could be your angle to get them to move on that project. Because yeah. if they see what it looks like on a phone, they right. might flip their shit. Really, exactly. I mean, they might they'll lose their they'll lose their mind. I agree. Um, it, for example, like I mean, it's a it's a typical closing technique for a website company to show that because people mm -hmm. don't know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. I know there's so many changes, but um, but uh, Judy, it's been so good chatting with you. I'm going to be giving yes. everybody the links in the description of the show to how to find you, but where can people find you? And what, what are you up to? Where can they engage with sure. you? Sure. So my website is digitalmarketingdoctor.us. And then there's like three or four icons that will take you directly to the social media um, handles. All right. So check all of that out with Judy. Judy, thanks so much for joining. I always Thank love you, talking Chris. to you. It's been so fun. <laughs> yeah. It's always fun connecting with you. Uh, folks, if you uh, want to hear more episodes of the Social Marketing Academy with me, Christopher Hopkins, um, check us out on iTunes uh, as well as YouTube. Go to my website, gosalesandmarketing.com. Go salesandmarketing.com. And on the top right-hand corner, there are social links. Like Judy said, click them there. We're around. And if you have any questions that you want to have answered in a future show, please just DM me, whatever. I'm not going to think you're a stalker. I'm going to listen to what you have to say. Ask us questions. Like you could see me and Judas have a full hour conversation where we covered lots of topics that would be covered and probably a consultation or a coaching session that people would pay us for. So this is really good information for you to be able to engage with. So send me your questions, what topics you'd like to hear. And um, we'll see how we can get the next uh, show wrapped around some of your questions subscribe, uh, share all that good stuff. Also, while you're on the website, don't forget to check out the blog as well as the e-course pop-up that I have on the website right now. I um, will be changing that pretty soon, but still, hey, it's free. Hello, go for it. Um, but um, until next time, this is Christopher Tompkins signing off from the Social Marketing Academy. Take care, folks, and we'll talk again real soon.